Hey everyone, we are outside at my backyard patio koi pond. I did make a video about this not too long ago. And when I made that video, I realized that there's something that I'm not particularly happy with my koi pond back here. What I need to change in this system is the filter. And this is not going to be an easy project because that thing's giant and it's got this huge plant growing out of it. But uh, basically what the issue is, is that it's got a little bit of a leak. So I'm noticing that I'm losing maybe like two millimeters or so of water every day or two. So it's a very, very slow leak that's just coming out of one of the old bulkheads where I didn't do a good job of sealing that. Um, and I also don't have very good polishing capabilities with this filter. So I'm going to basically redo the entire thing, get some supplies. I did get some bulkheads, uh, some bulkhead fittings from Aquarium Co-op. And uh, so I thought what I would do was just kind of film the entire thing of me going shopping, tearing this thing apart, building a new one, and talking about all the changes that I made and why. I got a few supplies. The first thing that I got was this uh, HDX tough tote kind of thing. It's uh, 27 gallons. I was actually wanting like, I think they make like a 38 gallon one. That's what I've used before, but they didn't have any yet. I went to two different Home Depots. So I got the 27 gallon. It'll do what we need to do. It'll actually make things a little bit easier down the road if I ever need to move anything, which we'll see here. Uh, probably not today, but on a different day when I'm having to uh, take everything out of that old filter. Um, but we're gonna do a lot of DIY stuff in this video. So we're actually gonna be using uh, an empty protein powder uh, container. I've got some uh, mesh, uh, craft mesh stuff that you get like at the craft store, fabric store. Um, you guys have seen this stuff before in other types of fish videos. We do have a couple of aquarium co-op bulkheads. Um, I will link those down below. And uh, just a bunch of PVC pieces and, and you know elbows and connectors, PVC cutters, drill bits, a drill, and uh, a couple filter socks, which will uh, come into play later. So anyway, um, I am going to basically drill things, cut things, get everything to fit the way I want to. And I'll just do like a time lapse here. I did, I did want to show you guys this. This is a ratchet. You probably have never seen a ratchet this big unless like you work on trucks or anything. It's actually, you know, it's quite huge. This, uh, this socket here is 50 millimeters as an example. And you would never want to use a ratchet or a socket if you're going to be using a bulkhead on a glass aquarium. But because this is just a plastic tote and uh, you know, it's just like a, a plastic tote thing. Um, I can put more pressure on it and I'm gonna do that just so I can get a nice tight uh, seal on this because it's not as smooth as glass would be. I probably won't use the ratchet part. I'll probably just use the socket and just twist it like that. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the uh, time-lapse camera and uh, get to cutting and drilling. All right, a little cell phone footage here. I just wanted to give you a shot or a quick little uh, in between of where we are and what I've done. So first thing I did is I drilled a hole in the side of this container. Now you can see they actually have like these little mold marks, which actually worked out perfectly for me to um, measure out where I wanted to put that bulkhead. I do have the other bulkhead here, which I think I'm gonna end up doing a secondary one here as a second um, overflow. Kind of like I have on the pond out there, but just side by side. That way, if one's clogged, I can have another one. So I'll probably do that um, in a different diameter. But uh, here, what I've done is we've got the bulkhead, PVC comes through, and then I've got it adapted from one inch to an inch and a half, and it goes through an elbow. And this one, we drilled a bunch of holes in it, so the water will flow out and back into the pond here. We use the empty protein container, protein powder there, and I used this mesh net and uh, made a little uh, basket. So this will be all full of substrate that that plant lives in. So this will be full of substrate in here 
and I don't want stuff going into this area and I want it to be able to be free and clear. So that's what this is. I'm worried that it might collapse. So I'm thinking of what I might want to do to keep this from uh, collapsing in. So I have a couple of ideas there and uh, yeah, that's about it. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is do kind of a secondary uh, bypass uh, in case this clogs or if it's raining just to have uh, something else and um, we'll think about how I might address this situation and then uh, we'll keep on talking about it. Okay so here is uh, pretty much the final setup. So here we've got uh, the main overflow or main I guess you could call it an overflow back into the pond so uh, the water will pump out. I'll kind of um, modify the water coming in. So it'll pump into here. It'll drain down to the bottom, flow back up. As soon as it gets to right about here, it'll drop through the overflow tubes and come out of the bulkheads. So this one is uh, much lower. We're probably a third of the way up on this one. And then this one here, actually the holes are drilled higher and then I put this Aquarium Co-op uh, sponge pre-filter just as something that I can easily take off clean and then put back on um, should I need to use this side. So the reason why this is higher is this is secondary, this is primary. So the idea is that this will be flowing, this won't be flowing and that the majority of the water will be coming through this one. And uh, I did uh, make the little basket. <laughs> so here we've got the mesh basket. I ended up just, uh, reusing the top of the of the protein powder container and um, just to kind of reinforce it so this fits in and me all right so here's the basket in place so this will be full of substrate to right around there this should be strong enough to to uh, keep this area relatively free of debris and uh, I'm hoping that this will be a little, little bit easier of a setup than I had before. And then again, the water will pump in and flow out uh, as it gets filtered through this. And then as far as um, a, uh, and I'll cut this to length once I set it up and figure out where I want it to, to come out. Um, and then as far as uh, doing any kind of um, mechanical filtration to make the water clear, I did buy a couple of filter socks and the idea is, is I'll, um, I'm gonna basically rig up a filter sock to fit on the end of here. So I'll have like a, a, an elbow coming down, flow into the filter sock. When that gets dirty, I can swap out the filter sock with a clean one, wash the old one, and then be able to swap back and forth every few weeks or something like that. So um, anyway, it's a little bit late in the day and I don't feel like tackling this because that's gonna be a messy project I've got to Put a platform across here so I can stand. I've got to, you know, drop the water out. And I've got to somehow pick this enormous plant up and put it in here in a substrate. So, sorry about the noise. So that'll be a different day. Um, but wanted to get this done so that I can tackle it. So now I got to clean up and uh, probably just modify a few things to uh, get it finalized. But you guys will see that at the end. Quick leak test. So got this thing full of water, or almost full. We're getting close to the overflow area. And a little bit of a leak there. So I'm gonna have to fix that. And this one is bone dry. So good to know as I uh, wanna test these before I set them up. I actually used the socket wrench on this one, did not on this one. So maybe I should have. Okay, so it's been a few days, uh, at least. I've been kind of putting it off because it is going to be a pain in the butt. It's gonna be quite the project. I got my shorts on. I'm gonna get filthy dirty and wet and everything like that. And I've gotta somehow lift this giant plant out of there and move all the substrate or whatever. Um, I did end up putting some silicone um, on the, uh, the outflow area of the uh, filter because if this were glass, like if it was an aquarium, it'd be fine, but there was like some rough edges and I was getting a couple of drops coming out and I don't want any of that. So I put silicone in there just to make it perfectly watertight and I've tested it and it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, which is going to be transferring everything over. 
Now one more thing I have to do is I have to build a brace for this. So I'll probably do that uh, in between here. Um, and the brace basically keeps the, uh, the filter box from bowing out from the pressure of the water and everything in it. So anyway, I'll go ahead and set up some uh, cameras and uh, we'll get to work. Okay, so uh, I've actually made a little platform here with some uh, 4x4s and a sheet of plywood. And that's just for me to stand on and be able to move around, obviously, because I don't have a lot of working area. So I think what I'm going to do first is, well, second, because I actually already made the uh, frame that goes around this filter. Um, I'm going to cut this plant back. So I'm not sure if you can tell, like, how big this thing is, but... It's huge. It's it's really big. So I'm going to cut it back, which will help me in just kind of maneuvering it and um, having to transfer it from the old filter to the new filter. And this is something that I have to do about, about three times a year anyway. I've got to cut it back because it grows so much because of all of this amazing fish water. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, start cutting that first. Well, um, I actually cut off the uh, time-lapse cameras just because it took so long for me to get this plant out of that uh, filter. It was so root-bound. I ended up having to cut like a lot of the roots. And uh, so now I've got this giant plant pulled out and I'm going to put it in the container and uh, start putting everything back together and getting the water pump um, flowing and all that good stuff. But man, if I knew it was gonna be this difficult, <laughs> I might not have done it or I would have like, I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have, I have no idea. It was crazy. So anyway, got it done, which you probably saw a lot of that in, in the time lapse. I'm just covered in filth. So now I'm gonna clean up a little bit and uh, transfer the plant over, put the new filter up and keep on trucking. Okay, we have success. It is working. It's working quite well. Um, the flow is strong. It's working the way I intended it to work. Obviously, obviously, over the next few weeks and stuff like that, I'll have to make little minor tweaks. One thing that I wanted to address that I had talked about earlier was doing some more uh, polishing. So I do have uh, some filter socks and I'm gonna figure out a way to um, attach the filter socks so that I can just kind of swap them out easily. I'll probably make some kind of like bracket out of like a, probably like a wire hanger or something like that. I'll make like a little hanger. And it'll just sit like that and uh, that way I can uh, filter when I want to every now and then. I've got a couple of them so I can swap them out and wash them. So anyway, um, yeah, it's done pretty much. I mean, that was a crazy job. Now I've got to clean up. i got to go downstairs and clean up all the stuff that I threw over the wall, all the plastic and everything, and uh, clean up up here and clean myself because I'm covered in fish poop, insects, duckweed, all kinds of craziness. Okay, same day. Um, so obviously it's still a mess back here, but it's going to have a temporary filter sock holder. Uh, I'll make something a lot nicer in the future and I'm not going to run this all the time just when I want to do some polishing. And then here we can kind of see how the filter's working. So water pumps in through um, a pump into the, uh, I guess we'll call this a filter now. And then it gets to a certain level and then goes through the strainer and then back down and then lots of biological filtration, not very much mechanical filtration. This second one is an overflow, as I shared before, so when it rains or if this gets plugged or something like that, then when the water level gets to be about this high, then it will drain through that secondary one. So, yeah, anyway, uh, here's my little uh, toy boat for the pond. 
Okay, so it is the next day and everything is working fine. Um, I actually have a couple of ways of having the water come back into the pond. So I've got just this kind of PVC 45 degree elbow. I can take that elbow off. I also have a flexible hose that I can attach. And uh, that is if I want it to be quieter because it takes the water right down to the surface and I don't have to hear the splashing because our bedroom window is right above. And if it's too loud, then I can change it. But otherwise, it's great. I'm happy. It's been, you know, a full day or, you know, it's the afternoon of the next day. So um, it is working quite well. Obviously, it was a lot more work than I had imagined. As I shared, I'm still kind of tweaking uh, the design a little bit when it comes to how I hold the filter sock. I actually ran the filter sock for about an hour or two last night and the thing clogged up because there was so much kind of stuff floating around. So um, I, I washed that one, it's drying, I'll throw another one on there. But I want to kind of perfect it so that's a lot easier of a system, but um, that's less important. I wanted to get this thing flowing and working. So yeah, over the next few weeks I might do a little tweaks to it here and there, but uh, pretty much it's set up the way I need to. So hopefully this video was easy for you to follow along and uh, maybe you might uh, incorporate this, this design in some type of filter that you might be building, or maybe you've done something similar. If you wanna learn more about this pond and uh, how it was built and everything, then check out this video right here. Mm -hmm.